up, it looked more like he had a lobotomy. To be honest with the American people now, who is actually running the country? I think Michelle Obama checks that box. Joe Biden has no business being the president of the United States. It's time to coalesce around Donald Trump. We've had a lot of conversations about the future. I am rooting for the strongest ticket that we have seen in my lifetime. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be watching... Vivek Ramaswamy's response to the presidential debate, as well as his rhetoric surrounding Trump's potential VP pick. And I wanted to cover this because first of all, I just always like to get Vivek's insight on things. And second of all, these are the two burning questions right now. If Sleepy Joe's out, what are the Democrats going to do? And also, what kind of a cabinet is Trump about to put together? So let's get into the first few clips, starting with Vivek's response to the debate, and then we'll get more into the weeds as we go. Do you think there might be calls amongst Democrats, I know you're not a Democrat, to uh, replace him? I mean, the, fact, the fact of the matter is this man cannot continue as maybe even make it to the end of this term as the president of the United States. I have deep concerns for our own country, even for the next six months with this man in charge. When you think about the greatest threats that we have faced in our lifetime to the homeland of the United States of America, and that this is the man who's the commander in chief supposedly making those decisions, that should be frightening to every American. And I do think that we are do for a Democratic Party that has a reckoning ahead of it to say that if this man is the best they could put up, that says everything you need to know about the modern Democratic Party. So they gave I think that Trump came out unambiguously. Do you think, think that replaced? Trump won this? The floor is yours, your reaction to that debate. Well, look, I was in Atlanta last night, got back to my home in Columbus today, and after sleeping on it, my conclusion is the same as what we saw last night, which is this was sad for the United States of America to see the current President Joe Biden in the mental state that he's actually in. There was a lot of joking about drug testing or were they going to drug him up. It looked more like he had a lobotomy. And I just think that that's a sad thing speaking as an American, regardless of partisanship. When you think about the country that has produced the greatness of innovation and the leaders leading companies in the private sector, to see the person who's leading the federal government himself be as absent as he was yesterday, I think is really a damning indictment of the modern Democratic Party. Mr. Mr. President Trump Mr. did a good Ramaswamy. job. Yep. Mr. Ramaswamy, may I just jump in? And it's interesting sure. that that you, you uh, ran as a as a presidential candidate for the Republican Party. You are you're you're representing former President Trump, but you started by speaking about President Biden's performance. Many are frustrated this morning that we actually didn't hear any answers to the questions posed to former President Trump about what he would do if reelected, what some of his policy platforms were. What did you learn about what? former President Trump might do were he to be re-elected to the White House? Well, you asked me about my impressions, and I think the number one most salient thing about the debate for anybody who watched it was indeed the surprise of Biden's performance, which is why I commented on it in response to your question. But I agree with you. It's much more productive to talk about the policy vision of... Imagine having a second phone number without the hassle of carrying a second smartphone around. With Numero, you can do just that. Get real numbers from more than 80 countries that work the man who's likely to be the next president, which is Donald Trump. And I think one of the things we took away from yesterday was talking about the revival of American success and a focus on the economy. The fact of the matter is President Trump, I think, demonstrated that despite being a member of a different economic class than most Americans as a billionaire, he is still somebody who understands prices have gone up, but wages have remained flat. And I think that part really landed. Mr. Ramaswamy, may I just point out what you said on, on uh, prices and also wage inflation? You said prices have gone up, but wages have remained flat. That is no longer true. If you look today, we saw inflation in May down fractionally, almost I, uh, negligibly. But wages were up seven tenths of a percent. I just want to get the latest well, let, data let me, out there. Let, let, me, let me just comment on that in, in direct response to you. So, so you're a numbers guy. I like that. As you well know, I believe you well know, inflation is accumulative, right? So that is the inflation rate. 
But inflation over the course of the last several years, you want to look at actual many consumer goods and products are up by over 50 percent since the time Biden took office. How much does a carton of egg cost? How much does a car cost? How much is your electric bill? Those are undoubtedly higher than when Joe Biden took office. And it is a hard fact that wages have not gone up at the same rate. So I don't want to play this verbal jujitsu of the last month's numbers. If you want to get into facts, I'm all in favor of it. Those are the hard, indisputable facts. And we don't have to argue the facts because most Americans who pay those bills already have a deep understanding of that. And I do think that that is going to be a guiding force in what we see this November. It should be clear to everybody that Biden simply cannot be president for another four years. My question is, though, how will the Democrats force him out before the election? How are they going to do it? Well, the reality is, Stuart, the first step was having this debate in the first place. This is the earliest ever televised presidential debate in U.S. history and the first one that occurred before the nominating convention of either party. That was not an accident. The Democratic camp, supposedly Biden's camp, but it was really the Democratic machine, argued for this and negotiated for this for a reason. The reality is they deserve to be honest with the American people now. Who is actually running the country? Who is in charge of the United States of America? After last night's debate, I don't think there's a single person at home who saw that who believes it's Joe Biden, because it's not. But we deserve a government that tells us the truth. And I think one of the concerning questions for right now, not even the election, I'm talking about today, the next few months leading up to the election, is who is actually leading the United States of America? The Democrats and the White House have not offered a clear answer to that question. And if they tell us that's Joe Biden, we now know that is a lie. And Americans, I think, demand the truth because our security determines and depends on it. There's supposed to be another debate in September. I think it's September the 10th or the 11th. Uh, the 10th, I believe it is. Do you think it'll take place? The reality is the Democrats may have a very different plan that they have yet to be transparent about with the public. And we're going to have to see what happens in the next two months on that front. Uh, former Missouri Senator Claire McCaskill, she's wondering why Kamala Harris or Gavin Newsom aren't throwing their hats in the ring. So Vivek, who do you think will run if the Democrats push Biden out? Who they got? Well, look, I think they have a lot of people who are aspiring to that seat, but they have an identity po politics problem. They have a Kamala Harris problem. If there's one person who's less popular than Joe Biden. It is actually none other than Kamala Harris, the person waiting if something happened to Joe Biden to take the presidency. So the reality is they have to pick somebody who solves that woman of color label. That's what they've adopted. It's their words, not mine, that I think have shackled their range of choices. I think Michelle Obama checks that box. I think many people who check even one of those boxes of being diverse, I think they're tethered to that in a way that makes it very difficult for them to put up another person that otherwise would fail their own identity politics purity tests. It's just but the reality is plenty of other people want to step up into the void. The reality is they have been non-transparent. They have lied. They've lied about the fact that Joe Biden is running the country. And I think that dishonesty persists no matter who they put up. Funny, Stuart, you were at the debate. When I was at the NBC debate last fall, one of the things I said was the Democrats needed to be honest that it was not going to be Joe Biden as the nominee. It was laughed off by the left as a conspiracy theory then. Well, it's become reality today, and we have to confront that truth. So an interesting response from Vivek there that I'd like to unpack a little bit. And it seemed as though he's got sort of a two-pronged response to what we saw. The first of which being who the hell is really running the country, which is an extremely reasonable question to ask, and a not so subtle way of saying that it is the deep state who is running the country and who is pulling the strings, and not the Democrat Party not Joe Biden, not Kamala Harris. And he's actually been super outspoken about this, especially during his time running when he was calling the politicians on the Democrat side and the Republican side for that matter, puppets, which is what they are. And this is a major selling point for him and for Donald Trump, two guys who advocate for draining the swamp, for defeating the deep state. We have begun to drain the swamp of government corruption. And I spoke to him about this exact concept during my interview with him on the Reality Based Podcast, and the episode is literally called How to Dismantle the Deep State. And there's a, a really interesting clip of Vladimir Putin talking with a Russian journalist, and he says that he's seen many presidents come and go. They all want to make a big change, but then when they get into office, the men with the briefcases come in and they tell them how it goes. And I think he's referring to the deep state. So when the men with the briefcases come and try and tell you how it goes. What's your response? You're fired. That's the answer. So if you guys would like to check that out, and if you guys would like to check out the Reality Based Podcast new YouTube channel and the audio platforms, I'll leave that below and I'll leave that in the end screen of the video as well. And so the second prong of his approach is obviously discussing that the Democrats need to do something different. 
they need a new plan. And guys, Vivek would obviously know more than he leads on and he would know more than we know. So the fact that he is so heavily implying that it's gonna be Michelle Obama who steps up really says something. And I believe as much as this pains me to say that if she was to come in, she would be an absolute knockout candidate for the Democrats. She would come in and sweep up the female vote for breakfast, the black vote for lunch, and then for dinner. She would come in and grab all of those Democrats and all those centrists who don't quite know who they want to vote for. They don't want to vote for Donald Trump. They don't want to vote for Joe Biden. Michelle Obama comes along and now they have something to get behind. So ultimately, I think it would come down to whether or not it's feasible, whether or not it's logistically possible, but also, and most importantly, whether or not Big Mike would have the desire to do that rather than just hanging around at Martha's Vineyard and paddleboarding with the kitchen staff. I mean, personally, I put her as the third most likely because even with the identity politics in mind, if Gavin Newsom was to come in, it would be like for like in that regard because he's a white male, Joe Biden's a white male, they could still have the black female as VP if Kamala retains that spot and you tick the boxes. We need you to be Mamala of the country. <laughs> And also, I actually think that it's a really good possibility that Kamala Harris steps up. The problem is she's been putting on this childish, cackling, autistic, grown infant, overtly fake, glued on smile type act since she's been VP. And this may come as a surprise to some, but I actually don't think that she's that stupid. I think it's pure theater. I mean, she used to be a top prosecutor, so she would have had to been in the courtrooms and all that. I mean, that says something, doesn't it? Apparently there was also a murder that he confessed to last July. What do you know about that? Uh, not much that I can talk about, but it'll come out in the case as, as the case proceeds. All right, well, uh, what time will he be in court today? Will he actually appear? Because this is an arraignment, correct? Uh, yes, it's an arraignment, which means that he will formally be told of the charges against him, and at that time he can then plea 99% of the defendants at arraignment, plead not guilty, and then we'll proceed from there. Is he, is he being held in, uh, in jail, or is he in San Francisco General Psychiatric? Uh, he's being held in the custody of the San Francisco Sheriff's Department. All right, Kamala, thanks for talking Thank with you, us. Thank you, So there's always the chance that she steps up, comes out, makes a very stoic, straight-faced speech, uses some big words, drops the whole sort of autistic child act, and then maybe with that does some damage limitation to her abysmal reputation, and people will at least think she's better than Joe Biden. <laughs> Look, if... <laughs> but I don't know. Apparently, at the moment, she's even more unpopular than him. So, anyways... On to the next part where Vivek discusses Trump's potential VP pick. And this is a very important topic. Charlie, I think the good news is I, I talked to a lot of people who have been successful multi-billionaires, investors, et cetera, who even a year ago, entrepreneurs who wouldn't have thought of even publicly voicing support for Donald Trump, who after a performance like last night, I think do feel some license to say, you know what? Joe Biden has no business being the president of the United States. It's time to coalesce around Donald Trump, even if we don't agree with everything he says. And I think there's a temptation on our side. I even feel some of this when I have those conversations to sort of be annoyed, to say, OK, where were you a year ago? And where were you two years ago? And why weren't you saying the same thing? I think we've actually got to resist that. If we want to win the election this year, even for people who are coming to the same views that people like you and I might have had a year ago, we should say, you know what? We respect somebody who's able to change their mind. That's how we're going to grow our America First coalition and really turn this election on the positive side. So on the negative side, complacency is not an option. But on the positive side, this could be the first landslide election possibility we've had in decades, in a generation. And think about what that does for the possibility of actually national unity, something we've forgotten in the United States, to unite around a leader like Donald Trump. That's a generational opportunity that I don't want to squander. And that's going to require us to give space to centrists and even people on the center left, give them the space not to put them in a box and say you were wrong and have to have the views you had a year ago, but to say that, you know what, if you want to open your mind and actually open your eyes and say, we're all human beings have made some mistakes, great. I think this is an attitude, this is a time for us to be charitable to those kinds of voters, be they CEOs or university leaders or anybody else to be able to come with us because we're going to need every bit of that to win this in a big way. We've had a lot of conversations about the future. He has not asked me to be his vice president. Whoever he asks is going to have, I think, a remarkable ability to serve this country in taking that America first agenda even further. I think one of the things about Donald Trump I've seen in him, and again, it's not one of these things that comes across, I think, on television. He is more ambitious for this second term 
to be even more successful on what we all view as a successful first term. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And so whoever he asks, I think has a great opportunity, but also duty mm. to serve this country. And I am rooting for the strongest ticket that we have seen in my lifetime. I think that's what we have the potential for this fall. And I also think that there's an opportunity to select somebody who both at one hand expands the base of voters, minorities, young voters, people who haven't historically come to the Republican Party, but do it in a way that does not compromise on the America first principles and the America first vision that the Republican primary base voted for when they put Donald Trump. Trump, 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 Trump. Any day, any time, I would always root for Trump. I mean, Trump obviously was a great president during his tenure. And um, the one thing um, the man said, he said, um, Trump wants to be better even in his second year. Right now, America is upside down. Things are spent. Like, I've never heard this kind of thing before. Like, America used to be, like, the perfect country, you know, when Trump was president, America was paradise. Like, it was gold. But now, you know, I'm complaining about my country, Nigeria, that things are now very expensive, yet the wages are not increasing, but prices of commodities are increasing. And it's the same thing happening in America. That is actually crazy. It's just crazy. Thinking about that, okay, so things are difficult in Nigeria, it's also difficult abroad. Wow. I just believe that Trump is going to make a difference. I wish we had someone like Trump in Nigeria, honestly. You guys, you guys, you Americans, you are so lucky. I wish we had someone like him in Nigeria, at least we'd have hope. But right now, Nigeria, we don't even have hope. We do not have it. But you guys do. So make sure you do not miss this opportunity. What do you guys think about this video? Drop a comment down below. I thought you enjoyed this. If you enjoyed this video as much as I did, give it a huge thumbs up. And please share this video. If you're new to the channel, join VRCT. Hit the subscribe button below. Turn on the post notification bell. So that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And that's guys. See my next video. Bye guys.